Hi guys, welcome back to my Missy podcast. As usual, you guys know how much I love to share with you guys knowledge and information around the world. You learn so much from me and on Missy podcast, you learn from my awesome guests that I bring around the world. And today is Eugene, one of the participants that I uh, have privileged to meet in the MMI. And he will say yes to be a guest today. I think he will have a lot to share with us as well. So hello, Eugene. Share with hello. my audience who are you and what you're doing. Hi, Miss D. And hello, audience. Uh, my name is Eugene. It is my privilege to be here. I am an abundance coach. So abundance means uh, more than enough. Abundance in mindset, abundance in money, abundance in friendship. Lovely. Let's mm. let's share a little bit of uh, how your journey is and wh why mm. you want to become an abundant coach. Sure. Uh, I was uh, born in Singapore. I'm still in Singapore. And uh, throughout my life, I was taught that there's not enough. <laughs> you know, when we study economics, the most basic rule is uh, mm. resources are scarce. And mm, therefore, yeah. we need to compete for it. Yeah. So since young in school uh I, I don't know i think vietnam should be the same right you know it's very competitive uh, you yep. need to make sure you get first position second position third position uh get good marks 80 90 100 uh, if not parents go us uh, and then uh, scholarship oh, only a few places you know maybe 100 people apply for four places uh, and then jobs to get promotion every year there's a bell curve right you know where only the top uh, one two percent get promoted then the rest remain the same and some are asked to go <laughs> so i i'm very very tired you know i'm 48 years old and i was so tired since 21 all the way until 38 wow many many years of tiredness competing uh red race corporate ladder uh, then after that i lost my job when i was 38 and i decided wow. okay Time to redefine my life. Time to recreate a new reality. And so I decided I don't want a life where there's scarcity, where there's competition. I want a life of abundance, where there's lots of synergy, friendship, and and collaboration. Yeah, so I decided to coach people on this. Nice. How was you figured out that journey and how do you pick yourself up after lose mm. a job at 38? And yeah, uh, I think I think definition of coach is like we have to be the one who walk and talk, right? We yes. have to do it right. first. We have to be success mm -hmm. in that journey before we yes. can able to call coach help others. someone else. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so how was that journey for you? Anyone that helped you on that? So what resources that you tap on in the mm -hmm. early stage to learn to be a coach? I was very, very poor. So I had no money to pay for anything, you know, like MMI where we met, uh, it was a few hundred dollars. Then after that, I had to sign up for a few thousand dollars, you know, all these things, no money, no money. Yeah. And I realized that my mindset was very, very stuck in my old beliefs. Mm. Uh, although my heart, right, my heart wanted to move forward. Let's say, ah, time to move forward. Yeah. <laughs> but my brain keep telling me, hey, but you don't have enough money. And you have three kids to feed. So even if you have 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, you shouldn't be paying for causes. You should be yeah. buying vegetables, rice, yeah. you know, grocery, or paying for tuition. Singapore, I'm, I'm sure Vietnam also, very popular yes. in tuition. <laughs> yeah, so, wow, I think it's very difficult. Then uh, a few angels appear in my life. You know, some are coaches, some are mentors, uh, some are just friends. And uh, by the way, I'm a Christian. So in church, I meet a lot of people. And then after mm. that, outside of that, uh, I'm in the association of speakers and coaches. Also mm. meet a lot of people. Wow, all these people, right? Amazing, amazing. They're so generous, so kind. Uh, we go hiking together. Let's say go to East Coast, go to Botanic Gardens. And then along the way, they ask me, how am I? I, I never felt such authentic care before. You know, in a, in a bank, corporate world, People generally don't do that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are all thinking like I'm so busy already, I have no time for you. 
and then they give a very toxic energy. Like if you ask them for help, they'll say, what do you want? What do you want? You know, like they ask them, hey, have you write my email? They say, ah, busy, busy. Uh, no time to read your email. So yeah. uh, I, I was very, very touched when I met very authentic coaches, mentors in my life. Uh, so this was 2015, 16, 17, three years of journey. Some of them I paid, some of them I didn't pay. Uh, then along the way, my belief system kept changing. Instead of thinking, uh, I, I don't think I have enough money to pay for coaches, to I can create more money. Right? And by investing in myself, I can create abundance. So the entire mentality was opposite. Yeah, And also about helping people. Uh, I used to think that I can't even help myself, you know, being rejected, rich, jobless, broke. Then how can I help people? Yeah, then I changed the mindset. I said, never mind about myself. Just help people first. Yeah, and after that, uh, whatever comes, comes, right? Because I, we, whether we believe in God or not, we believe there is higher mm-hmm. being, right? And the universe. And once we decide, like, we want to help people, then there's law of reciprocity, right? Law of abundance. We plant the seed, and next time the fruits will come. Yeah, so yes. 20, 16, 17, 18, I suddenly realized my life started changing, you know, more money in my bank account, more friends, more positive energy. Then I decided, okay, let's spread this abundance. So actually 2019 was the year I call myself Abundance Life Coach. <laughs> yeah, and after that, wow. Can you imagine during COVID, right? 2020, 21, a lot of people suffered, right? obviously. Yeah, but I didn't, you know, because my mindset was abundance. So the moment COVID happened, I created online coaching program and I created abundance <laughs> and then people pay me per month for subscription and they benefit i benefit yeah. yeah so this is my life journey so far yeah that's a very powerful story you know why i Thanks. say that because covid was was really changed my life forever as well you know i was when you share the struggling is the best way of let people realize that to be successful in something is not easy. And I always admire people who are willing to, to share the truth about their life because let's let's be honest to each other. We cannot lie to people anymore. You know, the old way of yeah. trying to bullshitting people around or try to that, it, tell them. Yeah, and like you <laughs> fake it or you tell them, just pay money first and I will teach you all this method is not work mm. anymore. Mm. And even for me as a business owner and as the coach and mentor at the same time to a lot of young people they will ask you a lot of smart questions that you can't hide you know you cannot yes. smoke around and that's why i love the authentic from you that you're willing to accept that like, yeah I, I have to step up and i have to yeah. change my life and yeah. you highlight very good point that i i'm not more than agree with you that as a moment you're ready and as a moment you're willing to change somehow you realize that help come right mm. you know sometimes it's just there every day but we didn't yeah. care because we the only thing we care like you say your environment is just in banker and and people yeah. with finance that's all they care about is money <laughs> so even uh, people around you nagging you about help yes. or you should don't just care so much about money you will never listen to it until you really yeah. lost a job or re- retrain like for my case is my husband will have a affair and I will have to decide oh. to divorce and I will be single mom in Singapore, foreign woman in foreign country, you know. Oh. I don't know what I can feed my daughter. So change only come when crisis come, right? I, yes. I just realized that. And I <laughs> embrace crisis in everybody's life now and when they come yes. to my life. I feel it very hard to share with people information when their life was too good. I'm not sure you agree with me on that, but that's yeah, how true, I feel. True. Yeah. So, Actually, in the area of branding right because a lot of people start to think as an entrepreneur we need to brand ourselves brand our company and Mm. there's a misconception that branding is about being very polished like for example i must wear a suit wear a tie wear a vest wear a a pocket square that's very old school already we don't do that anymore (laughs) (laughs) if you do that people will run away more nowadays you know you can't do it anymore it's not working by the way, who are watching this, if you love what uh, you've been listening from us so far, please follow him under the link under the description below. And yeah. and yes, get back to that topic about yeah. personal branding. Trust me, yeah. it's not working anymore. It's not, you know, people very yeah. smart already. Yeah. I wanted to be a, a branding coach in 2015. 
Yeah, mm. because 2013 November, I lost my job. 2014, I was looking for a job. I, I wasn't even trying to be entrepreneur. I was just yeah. trying to look for a job. Yeah, You mean go COVID, back to the old way, right? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I always joke with people, I, I was in a coffin, you know, like we yeah. work for companies, it's like zombie. We, yeah. we are in the coffin. Then no, finally, you're not people, alone. There's a lot of people like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like the, the heart, the soul is dead. Yeah, yes. we are just going to work for the salary to, to pay bills. Yep. Yeah, and then suddenly I lost my job, right? So that means somebody pulled me out from the coffin, right? Then I suddenly like, wow, I can breathe fresh air, I can see flowers and sunshine. And then you know what? I try to climb back into the coffin mm. <laughs> because of full-time salary. You know, all yeah. of us are addicted to full-time salary, like we're addicted to heroin, like, yeah. like drugs. Yeah. yeah. So I decided, okay, and especially I have three kids to feed, so it's logical that I want the full-time salary. Yeah, but you know, just like you have your daughter to feed, right? Yeah. Then I decided, okay, never mind, never mind. Okay, forget about salary. You know, let's brand myself and let's start from scratch at the age mm. of 41. Yeah, and when I started from scratch, I Google personal branding coach. You know, yeah. then everything that appear is how you dress, what color blazer should you wear, what kind of makeup should you wear, what kind of hairstyle. I was like, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Yes. <laughs> That's not personal past, branding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in the past. In the past. So yeah. I decided to completely change the personal branding uh, branding framework. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I began. Mm. Yeah. The next question I want to ask you, I'm curious about is what's the struggling in the journey to be a abundant coach for the last few years for you? Because I'm sure mm. you will face a lot of clients and a lot of story. Yes. And a lot of things that we learn in the journey will be help yeah. others as well. So what is yeah the struggling you have when you help other the main struggle is inside yeah because i'm 48 this year so for more than 30, 35 years of my life it was a very restricting limiting kind of mindset mm. you know that people are out to take advantage of me i need to protect myself against people right yeah. so when i started to open my heart out like like what we are doing we're both doing right now right we open up to say oh i was divorced i was retrenched i was struggling you know all this very openness very vulnerable people mm. can take advantage of also right? mm. because the more open we are they attack the more, you yeah right it's like like no shield so like come come shoot me shoot me and yeah. some people won't shoot you some people will hug you but yeah. there will be people who shoot you. There yeah. will be people who shoot you, right? So I remember I was featured in a newspaper and mm. well, all the trolls, you know trolls, huh? <laughs> start to yeah. appear in my feed to say like, oh, you're such an irresponsible father. You know, how can you be an entrepreneur when you have three kids to feed and yeah. your wife is not working? How can you be a lousy breadwinner? You're not even oh providing God. enough for your family. Wow. And then some will say, oh, you're so fake. You know, I don't believe anybody can be so positive. Mm. You know, uh, quit your acting. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Well, it was so sad, you know. It's so sad. Yeah. And, and okay, all these are strangers. Lah, but clients yeah. sometimes like that. You know, because I coach companies. If you coach individual, usually they are very positive, right? Because the individual invest in coaching. So they are all very positive. Yeah, mm. but companies, right? It's the HR who invest, right? The HR pay me money. Then they send 20 of their management to me. Wow, these 20, easily five of oh, have very, very toxic energy. You know? mm. <laughs> They're thinking like, who are you? You know, wrong person to coach me. Are you sure you're successful? Wow, mm. so very toxic. But I'm very thankful, uh, you know, over time, like three months, six months, 12 months, you know, I start to gain trust and then people start to meet me for coffee. You no, know, those very skeptical people. Ah, then they become my friends. Yeah, so I, I'm glad I'm still in a good place today. <laughs> yeah. I, I will share with you that a lot of things that I, even you meet people like you and me in Singapore is very rare. So I will yeah. be upfront to you. By the way, you guys to watching this video right now, you guys being witness, we uh, make friends in the recording. That's how much <laughs> I love my channel because how authentic we are that we're recording with... Yeah real conversation you don't have to script yeah. you don't have to be preparing life don't yes. have to be that way and i want no to prove real, to sir. No that, real, sir. Yeah, i want <laughs> to prove to people that 
yes ai come and technology come but everything it should be enhance our way of making friends and i and i want mm. to share with you on this i've been doing youtube for the last six years of my life i've been public oh. figure in my country for the last six years whatever oh. you just share with me is just so small what you will get hit when the more famous you are right and sometimes yeah. people even attack my children sometimes people even yeah. attack of they can make fake story they're like what kind of woman are you like how do you let your child who don't have a father how do you so proud to share with people about your divorce i say oh, like no. until you you sometimes you have to cry to sleep yes. i say so if a man abuse you you should allow it and shut up yes. you know what kind of message that i'm trying to give my daughter and so on so sometimes yes. you just have to come back to your core value which is that's what yes. we are good at Yes. We hold ourselves accountable that we know. Come on, Singapore, how bad was that? <laughs> how bad it can be? Because the government <laughs> takes care so well. Am I right to say that? The government, yeah. if tomorrow your kid don't have money to go to school, the government take care. If you declare that your house got no food, somebody will send yeah. food over you. Yes. I don't have that privilege in my country. I'm, mm. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah. I say that yeah. not to to bring yeah. my Singaporean friend here. I'm, I'm live here for 11 years, you know. So yes. all this fear, at, like you say, all this fear or like scarcity mindset, it actually indirectly stop us from helping the world to be better. And I love yeah. that you highlight that because you have the right to say it because you are another Singaporean. <laughs> you can say it about people around you. Yeah, um, yeah. As a Vietnamese mom who raised a Singaporean kid, to be honest, I will never open my mouth and say all that, right? Oh, Even deep yeah. down inside our heart, we know that's the fact. We we don't allow to. You agree with me? And yes, there's some yes. fact that I want to ask you again that mm. as a 48 years old my man, by the way, guy, do you agree with me? Me, he looks so great and happy and <laughs> thank you, <blow> thank you. <laughs> blooming for the age of like no grooming, no grooming. Yes, yeah, real hair, like, real, real, real <laughs> man is come. Real man is uh, appear at late, but it's never too late because you have yeah, a lot of work late. done at forty eight. I will yes. tell you, a lot of men will need you in the future. Mm. Is that struggling for you to help men? Because mm. I will ask this question because you are rare male who are on my podcast. Yes. Oh, you really? Mean most of have, females. It is like if I have wow. ten guests, maybe I just have eight is female and only two. Wow male willing to share right. and i yeah. hungry to find more positive men <laughs> who open enough yeah. who sit together with me and to help yes. i mean we say help men look like they weak but it's not you know i believe no, no, we no. all should no. share knowledge with each other so yes what's the struggling that you deal with men and what mm. is the advice that you want to give to yeah. young men young boy no. Yes. who on this journey because they have a lot of responsibility on shoulder to be honest yes. you know i yes. i feel deeply respect men who are have to face emotionally yeah. like mentally and strength to take care of their family their parents their wife their children and then at the same time they have to figure out who are they so yeah. how do you deal with that yourself and and what the tip you can give to young men well that's a very powerful question yeah, right right now there's a pandemic on uh, men's mental health yeah in singapore suicide rate is very high in japan as well in korea also uh i mean i don't want to go so dark into suicide because i've never attempted suicide yeah, yeah. but unfortunately i have a few friends who, who killed themselves already yeah so i i came from a boys school since you asked about men uh, i give you some background uh since i was 10 years old i was in a boys school yeah. Mm. all the way until 17 was the first time i entered a school with some girls mm. <laughs> yeah so throughout this whole time right is the value forming stage right yeah. and what kind of values did we form we form a very uh, sarcastic insulting kind of culture you know the mm. the way we love each other is by insulting say hey you're so fat mm. ayo you better lose weight or like are you so ugly which girl wants you you know, don't, wow. don't joke, uh, you have no girlfriend. Uh, right? Yeah. And then the way we celebrate birthday is to carry the body. Let's say it's my birthday. So there will be 10 people carrying my body. right? And then like slamming me against the wall or against the flagpole. right? This kind of violence is the way we celebrate each other's birthday. Yeah. And sometimes they'll close all the door and strip us naked. You know, so this is like 
uh, I'm talking about 1980s and 1990s lah. Yeah, yeah. You know, without smartphone, with smartphone, yeah. the school will have been suspended already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, it, even undergrad, last time, right? They they used to dunk heads into into like toilet bowls, and I heard that in Western world is wor- even worse lah. Yeah. yeah. So in Singapore, right? They put into bucket of water, then they chase you around. Ah, so very very negative environment and we start to think it's normal that means yeah. it's very normal to be abused and therefore mm. when we go to the corporate world like banks where the abuse is a lot more subtle right it's like maybe a mm. toxic email like uh, it's your it's your fault not my fault yeah or like you no know, uh, you're wrong i'm right you know this kind of very toxic emails mm. or toxic meetings right where they mm. keep you quiet like the more senior person talk non-stop for one hour and yep. then you are not supposed to raise hand. They say, "Oh, sorry, we have no time. Can you don't ask question?" Yeah. You know, then we start to take it. You know, I- I'm sure women also lah. But since I'm talking about men now, you know, so yeah. we start to suck it up. We feel like now, mind, be strong, right? Don't don't cry over stupid things like this. Yeah. Mm. And then when we are about to cry, then we stop ourselves. We say, "No, no, be strong, right? Mm. Oh, my family needs me to be strong. The company needs me to be strong." But this is a very false belief. Yeah, because the more I I realize uh, now I'm 48, I've gone through 10 years of therapy. So the more I try to be strong, the more I crack. Mm. Right? Because human beings, our psychology is not made to hide things. It's yeah. made to be open. And yeah. this is real therapy. Of course, being open selectively, uh, you know, with, with the right people you trust, you know, yeah. trying it out. And I cried many, many times also. Yeah. So now I'm on a journey, you know, because I share my story so openly about retrenchment, about depression, yeah. about poverty on social media. So a lot of men text me, you know, they say, uh, I didn't tell my wife about this. I didn't tell my my parents. I didn't tell my sibling. I'm only telling you, right? Can you keep keep a secret? Yeah. Then I realized, wow, this is so meaningful to, to be trusted yeah. by men yeah. about their, their journey and struggle. Mm. Yeah. So men have a pandemic right now. I think all of us can can help. And of course, not only men can help. You know, women like yourself can help. You know, men, men love yeah. to talk to women anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I think that's my blessing as well in the journey of starting my self-development. By the way, I'm asking that because all my mentor is male. Wow. And I around with all amazing male who are successful, yes. build million-dollar empire, loving mm. husband and that's why yeah. they make me still believe in men you see so a lot yeah. of people ask me, how can i be so positive after i go through a trauma divorce like i do yes. right i say yes. because you have to pick a strong man and to show you that the world still have amazing men yeah yes. the, the number of men like my mentor like you is so small but doesn't mean that it cannot be done so so yeah. do i a lot of amount of number women yeah. that toxic or try to share nonsense and that's why i start my channel actually yes. i was wake up midnight in my sleep every night because i understand vietnamese right so when do you read the news so much painful like people die in the container because they try to escape they try to go yes. overseas to find money to take care of their family or they get kidnapped sell kidney organ in the botch of the country or like a lot of younger in vietnam still get raped uh, because of the parent no education the mom run away from the abused husband and left the kid with the dad and the dad start oh. to molest them or rape them so all this new i read every day because i can understand vietnamese that's what in vietnam they post how would i live in my life to raise a daughter when i know another part of the world where i come from and that's a motivate me to do my channel that's motivate me to decide if i keep complaining about people do bad thing if i keep complaining about people express negative thing and me, yeah. who am I today, able to take care of myself, financially independent, why I don't speak up, why I choose yeah. to live as, oh, I know it, but not my problem. Someone else will yeah. solve it. I will never demonstrate to my daughter to be a right human being. I'm not talking about gender here, you know, like yes. the right human being, you know? Human being. Yes, the, the evil will continue to do what the evil loves to do, but the angel should take a step forward as well and i love to talk to people like you as well because you show me something that yes you have a man outside there 
that positively want to help other men. But mm-hmm. people need to know that he has it, right? All the men need yeah. to know that he has it because yes, I can share with men, but somehow I find another man can educate another man better than a woman. I yes. can teach a man how to be a gentleman by how they take care of me. I can teach a man how to love a woman because I'm a woman. I know what woman needs. Yes. I can teach a man how to be a father and what to support a, a young daughter because I'm a woman. I know how yes. the girl need from the dad. But I cannot teach a man how to be driven in their career. I cannot teach a man how to deal with their emotional because we are wiring different. Do you agree yes. on that? Like okay. your emotional and my emotional is different, and yes. logically we are different as well. And how mm. do you use your skill in business? How do you use your skill and deal in life? Is very different with me. And and in that part, that's why I say I still admire and respect a lot of. Men in my life, especially mm-hmm. my mentor and all that, because because the mindset like you, and thanks for your story because I ho- mm-hmm. I really want this video to reach more young boy, mm-hmm. young man that suffering. Remember you're not alone, guy. Like you remember you're not alone, and all this story to just to support you, guy. Again, we yeah. say we cannot do the work for you, right? We only yeah. can support yeah. you by telling you that you're not alone, and please yeah. reach out for help. And help doesn't mean weak. Yeah. Sometimes it's a lot of strength to ask for help because we sure. are born at the, the the life that people tell you. Or oh, if you ask for help, you dumb, you stupid, you're not smart <laughs> enough, you're not good enough. That's why you need people help. You have to do everything by yourself. Yeah, I cannot do anything by myself. Even right now we're recording. I'm sure you can see. <laughs> I have my team run behind me. Sure, I cannot sure. live without them. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So the next question I want to ask yeah. you: If today you have kids, right? Let's talk mm-hmm. about yes. now. Let's talk about adult men in the relationship and kid. What is the most struggling you face in your relationship mm-hmm. that you find relate with other people as a as a father, right? And mm-hmm. have yeah. kid is a different story. And how yeah. do you going to raise the resilient kid in this? Like you just say, like the the the, the crisis of emotional yeah. <laughs> issue yeah. around the world, right? All right? Yeah, I find that first number one step is we look within ourselves. So, for example, I went to a good school, and I had good results. So I mm. tended to believe that the success in life is from good results, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I don't know any other way. Yeah. Oops, I now, don't know. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I don't like, have money to finish my study. That's the honest answer. I don't have parenting as an oops. <laughs> I'm not of the standard. <laughs> the, the top 10 richest people, I think seven of them drop out of school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I I can read about it, you know, like people dropping out of school and becoming successful. But my own life was I studied hard and got a good degree. Yeah. And then at the age of 38, I lost my job. And that was the first time in my life I realized, hey, my degree cannot help me. Mm. No, because all my life I thought my degree was my safety net. Yeah. So I think that is a very, very important turning point as a father. Right? Because what's the kind of narrative I'm willing to accept from my children? Mm. Right? If I believe that grades is everything, then I see a lot of Asian parents, right? I mean, it's very common. You know, they start to beat their children, neck their children, criticize their children for having bad grades. <laughs> you know, so they, I, I mean, I find it very odd because I, I, I used to be like that because grades mm-hmm. is everything. Man. Yeah, yes. so I, I even use very toxic words on my children to say, mm. how come your father can get this A easily? Why are you struggling? You know, like I, I keep comparing. Comparison. Yeah, yeah. comparison is the most toxic form of language. Right? Mm. Uh, so I, I can sense my children's self-esteem becoming lower, right? And then ov- obviously the relationship is also not good. Uh, because who, who wants to talk to a toxic father? <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm very glad I went through 10 years of therapy. Uh, if I did not, right, I think today I'm still the exact same toxic father. Mm. So right now I'm still not perfect, but I'm a lot more open-minded to multiple areas of success. Yeah. Like, you know, what is yeah. success? May not be great. It can be just kindness is success, right? Entrepreneurship is success. Resourcefulness is success. The ability yeah. to express your opinion respectfully is success. 
you know, yeah. just sitting down and smelling the flower and playing with cats is success. You know, so once I'm willing to accept multiple forms of success, oh, then our relationship became so much better. You know, the father, son, father, daughter relationship. I brought my son to MMI, by the way. Yeah, he's, uh, I don't know whether you saw him. He's 20 years old, taller than me. <laughs> yeah, so we learn together, you know, how Lovely. to have a yeah, millionaire mindset. And then yeah, and that, that's a that. very good point because I want to highlight on this. Is that the relationship really changed between you and your children when you change? Because for me, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So I yes. want to encourage parents on this because yes. I have clients who send kids to me and ask, oh, can you coach my children? I always tell them, I say, no, I want to coach <laughs> you because you are the problem. You, know, you, are, the you problem. are the problem. And when you say that, they feel offended. I say, I'm so busy. I need to run my company. Can you just? I say, hey, I'm not your tuition teacher, you know. And that's my style well, coaching, by the way. I'm very, yes. very tough. I'm very yeah. tough. I'm very direct, and I'm very, very, how to say, like tell to the face. And I can yes. refund the client money with no question <laughs> when they don't collaborate with yeah. me in the way of understand yeah. what I'm trying to say. Because the kid have no fault. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah, and yes. that's what the the. The confirmation I want to ask you is that the relationship <laughs> between you and the kid chain as yeah. a woman you chain. Hundred percent. I think uh, to to go even deeper, the first step is awareness. Mm. I notice a lot of parents, especially now I'm forty eight, right? So I'm surrounded by parents. Right? Yes. And a lot of parents, I I realize that when I meet, especially meet them at class gatherings and all that, there's a general lack of awareness. They 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 still feel that their children has problem. They say, oh, yeah. my children addicted to handphone, addicted to computer, lazy, careless, bad attitude, millennials, strawberry, fragile. Like a lot of judgment words. Yes. Like, very few are self-aware that, hey, I, I need to change my mindset. I need to change right. my language. <laughs> mm. So first step already fail, right? No awareness. Yep. You can forget about any other change already. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. So... I want to bring that up because I was been in uh, education of a lot of young people and uh, of course the parents slowly come to me but most young kids the most painful thing I hear from them from the age of 15 to 30 that's what the most people come to me that they say I wish my parents were like you and that's mm. keep me very hard in my heart you know especially yeah. I have a kid I have a kid and my priority never about and I think I say this and my channel may get uh, hate in Singapore, but <laughs> I never encourage my daughter about number. Mm. I doesn't care if she talk class. You know what yeah. I tell her every day? Can you please just pass to the next level? Even bottom is fine. Okay, <laughs> I just so because level. because I don't speak Mandarin and she has right. to learn Mandarin, right? Oh, I, see, I, see. I have I have tuition for her and she always cry because she have to learn it. I say, you know, I just need you to pass the whatever exam in Singapore. Yeah. After I think yeah. you make money. And you know, I have a lot of stone. People attack me. Oh, I see. But I'm sharing that. But I don't yeah. care. Why I say yeah. I don't care? <laughs> because cannot every kid become number one employee. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah. want to raise my kid to be employee. Yeah, <laughs> to right. be honest, I, I don't see it in her. I don't think yeah. she's going to be a good employee. She will question so much to the boss that the boss <laughs> going to punish her badly. And I think it's a bad it's a bad that you aware that what your kid talent is and you force her to be do right, something right. opposite. But she questioned too much. And yeah. then sometimes I asking my girl, so why my kid ask so much question? And then I reflect back myself. So do I. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be yeah. successful because I ask a lot of questions. questions. I'll be successful yes. because I want to solve problems. Yes. And that's what I've been raised her. Then I cannot yes. blame her because she's just like me. So that's yes. come back to the next question. How do you yeah. go through that struggling to deal with parents and what your yeah. way, your method that work, and why the parents should, in Singapore should reach out to you. Yeah, uh, I don't specialize in parents, but because mm. I'm a parent, so parents do reach out to me. Yeah, uh, I usually focus on the parent first, exactly like you, right? I, I they, they tell me their children got problem. I want to ask about the parent first. Yeah, and the parents, I mean, being a parent myself, I know a lot of challenges, right? Work, maybe yeah, work course. environment is toxic. Right, yeah. So I want to deal with how they energize themselves, you know, how to recharge their positive energy at work, which then also at home, right? Yeah. Then gradually, right, their children's attitude change. 
Yeah. Right, right, right now, I am coaching about four teenagers and they are very open with me. They say, oh, my father is very what, my mother is very what. Right? And then I talk to the parents. Like I say, uh, can I share an open feedback with you? Right? If you are, you are open-minded. Yeah, then the whole family becomes like sort of moving together. Right? It yeah, cannot be just the children moving. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, that's impossible. Then, okay, even more specific, the first mm. thing I... I like to talk to them about his belief system, just just like mm. me. You know, the first thing I changed before my finance changed, before my career changed, is my belief change. Exactly. Also, I start to sit mm. down with them and ask them to write down their belief system. And a lot of them mm. struggle with writing their belief system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the moment they, I mean, MMI, we did that, right? You know, 72, yeah. 72 belief systems, yeah. So when they write down, then I get them to reframe their belief system. Right? What is the possible belief they can embrace? You know, what are some role models? What are some emotional anchor they can have, right? And some, like you, you know, your mentors, right? And then I'm sure we also watch other people's podcasts. We watch yeah. YouTube, right? We read books. We make good friends at MMI, right? And outside of MMI. Then suddenly we realize, hey, there's so much possibility of who we can become. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to coach parents to be. I mean, I don't see them as parents. I just see them as a 45-year-old man, or a 42-year-old homemaker. And just last night, I was talking to a homemaker and her concern is not so much, hey, how can I better coach my daughter? It's, hey, how can I find my next 20, 30 years of life? Yeah. And then she said, my daughter wants to encourage me to find my joy, find my fulfillment. And that inspires my daughter, she said. Yes, then, wow. then I suddenly realized, hey, yeah, exactly. To be a good parent, you need to find your joy. I mean, there's yeah. a phrase called Ikigai, which I'm sure you're familiar, right? We yes, to find what I we found are. my icky guy. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. But some parents. But don't again, know. like what well, because of the mental help. So I say yes. I I I love what you you we are so similar that you have to have mentor. Right? You have to have yes. mentor. You have to uh, allow your mentor to help you, and at the same time, book the ego aside because one of the thing that would people like strong character like us and yes. too smart is we tend to think we know everything about us and we don't allow yes. other people to help. I'm yeah. come to the place right now that I think wisdom come over years and experience, right? I I learned how to shut my mouth when my mentor shares something that I know. Even got money, I cannot get. Even got yeah. money, you cannot get certain wisdom from. And yes, certain things they learn back from you as well because they learn they in different generation. Yeah. Right, right now, my company run with AI. My mentor was like seventy. He barely yeah. can use a computer, right? But yeah. because the mindset of never stop learning, yeah. embrace right. him to ask me back, how do you do this? Can you teach me on this? You know, and I love yeah. that we are men. I, I call mentor mentee, but come to the day that we have to learn exchange in value again. And yes, yeah. back to you. Yes. I agree on you. Like you just have to figure out your ikigai. Yeah, yeah. ikigai. And just in case your listener may not be familiar. So we need to find our passion. Mm. Uh, this one is common. Uh, I mean, everybody say find our passion, but they forget the yeah. other three, right? <laughs> yep. So we need to find our passion, but at the same time, be very, very good in it. And, and that yeah. is mastery. I, I noticed, by the way, I have a book uh, called Super Brammy, and inside I thought about mastery. Mm. Because a lot of people, for example, they are not very good in what they do. Let's say they are not good in accounting, or they are mm. not good in speaking, but they say, I want to be successful. Mm. You know, if you do digital marketing, search engine optimization, and then bring customer to you, but you're not good in that. This is called a scam, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, very fancy advertisement for chicken rice, but the chicken rice tastes horrible, right? Mm. So we want to be very, very good in it. We want to be loving it. Then we want to help people, right? This one, a lot of people forget. They always ask, like, what do you want to do? Then they say, oh, I want to do options trading. I mm. want to do uh, home investing, value investing. Yeah. I say, that's very nice. That, that's like a hobby. But how are you helping people? You're not helping mm. people. Right? You're just growing your own money. <laughs> also, we need to find something to help people. Then finally, of course, it's the money part. Yeah. yeah. And that's the reason why we go to MMI. Right. A lot of us say, oh, no need, no need. Don't talk about money. Money is dirty. No, I want to talk about money. 
Right? Yeah. So when we, we should talk more about money, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I mean, not only MMI, we should yes. go all the class that is available because yes. you, you, I will tell you, like, that in the journey of learning, like, same like you, three years of my life is education, all my salary take out from work is to pay for education and take care of my kid. And yeah. sometimes you just have negative in your bank account and even yes. like, you have death from your divorce because you have to pay for your lawyer and then yes. you need to pay for your helper because you need to work so all these i faced before so i would um, tell people you don't have to lie to your audience no you don't have to lie to your going to be a customer i've been there i'm broke i worse than you i'm not even singaporean i don't even have a degree you know i'm not yeah. even have a credit card i'm not even have anything that a form of education that singaporean have it's mean the no. gap between me and a singaporean is like not even 100 time different like it's like uh, a million time you can speak english well you can speak mandarin uh, you have all this information amazing from young you learn i don't so yes. it's impossible to make excuses that why your yes. life is miserable because i don't yes. i don't allow myself <laughs> to right and i love that and, I love and, that. That, and that's when i come to my singaporean friend and they and my my teacher love to use me as example when every time singaporean come and say I cannot do it because of this, this. I say, look at her. She's Vietnamese. She comes to Singapore. She have a Singaporean kid and now she's stuck here. What are uh, your excuses, right? And I, and, and I know sometimes it's like a punch to another Singaporean. Yeah. It's a fact. My life is worse than you. My life uh, is yeah. worse than you. But even that, I don't speak up and say my life is worse than you. I yeah. use that as an empowerment to another woman. I like, and I don't encourage women to divorce either. Yeah. You know, that's a very different, right? People are like, oh, this coach is divorcing. She must, I say, yeah. no, I would yeah. love them to fix inside the marriage yeah. because I want yes. the kid to have a parent. Yes. I would love to fix people married, help them together because I would love the children grow in the environment, have parents. I would love to encourage more Singapore parents, please go to therapy to be a better person so your kid yeah. don't suffer from your problem. Because the kids suffer actually from both parent problem. You know, you already have a problem. You come together, become a bigger problem. And now your kid yeah. has to deal with your problem. And that's the same mistake I made. I married yeah. and I, I was too young. I would, didn't know that the trauma in my childhood had a problem. I'm sure he did as well. You know, I'm sure he yeah. did. I'm sure he have a problem. And we combine, combine our problem together. And But it's never too late. Never I still remember late. when I come back from one of my class not am i that uh, that's the day my i'm awake that's the day i realize i'm the problem i come back mm -hmm. my daughter only 18 months i hug her and i tell her i'm saying i'm sorry i'm sorry because as a mom i fail to keep the marriage as a mom i fail to keep you a father i'm sorry because of whatever i go through in the past create me for who am i today but today i forgive myself and i want to be a better mom for you I will live my life and demonstrate to you how to be a woman. 18 months, she don't know what anything of this. But that's impact my memory up to now yeah. for the last five years. And I'm same like you. I would say I may not a perfect mom. Mm. But I give her the best I could. And I give her all the knowledge I've been learned. I give her mm. a space to come home and share with me and cry with me. I give yeah. her... A conversation like an adult i give her truth and fact about my life about the future about outside i teach her to be independent and without self-education without self-learning without reaching to therapy and support and help for mentor i will never be a mom where am i today mm -hmm. you know just talk about the mom alone i'm not talking about the business woman the entrepreneur yeah. a coach a mentor back to another younger impossible so first have to become from us, right? Yes. We have yes. the one that changed for us. And that's, I come to the next question about mm. relationship with you and yeah. your wife. Yes. How was that chain between you and your wife after you chain mm. and grow? Mm. Because I'm sure a lot of men outside there want to learn as well. How yeah. do I deal with my crazy woman at home? <laughs> <laughs> first of all, um, she's my first girlfriend. Oh, yeah. that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god your life yeah. is really really a movie <laughs> <laughs> it's like a movie <laughs> so uh okay I, I want to be very open here yeah? when i was uh, 16 i tried to chase a girl she rejected me 
Then when I was 17, I chased oh, another girl okay. and she rejected me also. Yeah. Then when I was 18, 19, I met this wonderful, wonderful lady in my church. And uh, then we dated for five to six years. And then now we are married for 22 years. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that's why my son is 20 and then my daughters are 16 and 14. Okay. Having said that, uh, obviously, right, we're not staying in some Hollywood movie or, or Disney cartoon. Yeah, of right? course. So throughout, throughout the 22 years, we had a lot of therapy, a lot of therapy. Mm. Mm. Uh, and that was also part of my discovery as a man. Uh, so let me digress a bit because it's related to my parents. Yeah. So my parents, uh, they, have been, they, they were never divorced, but the marriage wasn't happy also. Yeah, uh, so my, my dad uh was always not there i mean she he is not alcoholic or gambler or anything but he he's not there right he doesn't talk to me he doesn't hug me very, very typical like, a lot of chinese or asian asian families like that asian family yeah, yeah. my dad is same also your dad yeah i think as i we coach more and more people we realize hey, most of the fathers not not every single one like, yeah but most of the fathers have this same pattern yeah, it's right. not and like they don't love us. They just don't know how to yeah. show the love. Correct, correct, correct. I mean, he, my, my dad passed away in 2019. So mm -hmm. I was the one giving the eulogy. And that was exactly my message. I said, actually, I have no doubt he loves me. I have completely no doubt he loves me. Just that he didn't love me in a way that I needed a love. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now that I'm an adult, I can look back and I can embrace that love. But even mm -hmm. though it is not the love that I was craving for, but now as an adult, as someone who has been through the healing journey, I can embrace and accept that love. Wow. Then a lot of people came up to me after the eulogy said, wow, this is like a mind-blowing moment because all of us always want people to love us the way we want yep. to be loved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is called love language, right? Five love languages. All right. Five love language, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, but we, we forget that, hey, why don't we learn to be humble and open-minded? Right? Even mm. though... Let's say my father or my wife or even my children, yeah. right, don't love me. Or even clients, right, don't love us mm. the way we want to be loved. Like, for example, I love to be loved in a very verbal way. Like, oh, mm. I love you. You're so awesome. Mm. I'm so proud of you. You know, some people say very angmore, you know, very, very westernized kind of love. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that's the kind of love I am hungry for. But so far, right, my father has never said it. And then my brother, my older brother, mm. is exactly like my father, actually. He has never yeah. said it. Yeah. Uh, my wife is almost exactly like my father also. Mm. <laughs> uh, rarely says it. Yeah. So I realized, eh, God is like teaching me a lesson here. Because God yeah. wants, he knows, he knows that I need this kind of love. But there must be a reason, right? Why mm. he is purposely not giving it to me. right? And I, mm. I decided that this is the reason that I need to be stronger and more open-minded to embrace multiple ways to love yeah mm. so this sort of describes my marriage and love story so far <laughs> yeah. yeah and 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 i i ask this question to empowering more men to understand mm. that you can you can keep your family but you have to do it early because as a when the as a woman I was sharing the woman perspective as so the, the day the woman decides to leave it means she already taught a thousand times <laughs> right and men it just come as a day that want to fix it which is too late yeah. and I Correct. would love because I and I'm no doubt that men love women you know we need each other right but yes. Yeah. Have you feel like like some of a woman nagging so much that men feel like why she nag so much and then their brain go to the shutdown mode, but trust me, as a moment she still nag, it means she still care. Yeah, I think yeah. the most scary thing is when woman shut down and she yeah. shut up and yeah. she stop care and she just yeah. be a zombie in the house or is the zombie <laughs> next to you. It yeah. means she yeah. done. It means yes. she done. Yeah. It means she no longer care <laughs> and no care I'm, is. More I'm yeah. done. It's scary, all right. And and yeah. I'm saying that to let young men know that you still can reach out for help. You yes. don't have to listen to me. Listen. Yeah. Maybe you find a man like Eugene and talk to them. <laughs> yes, right. Yes. Don't don't have to reach out to woman. Maybe because when every time my channel have another thing, uh, Eugene, I will tell you. 
men uh. attack me because they say see another empower empowering woman that you know oh, like raising that many, and that many, like, like yeah. yeah and like don't want to attack men i'm like oh my god again you know <laughs> i don't want to attack men i want to help yeah. men i love men i would love to support all the men you know yeah, yeah. I, I failed with my marriage and i don't yeah. run away from that i failed to yeah. help my my ex-husband yes and i don't think he need my help either you know <laughs> it's obvious <laughs> so, but i would love to help other people who ready to get help and yeah. let's reach out to people like eugene you know i can go this this episode go on and go off forever <laughs> the limitation yeah. of one podcast is, this is so amazing conversation we can do a part one part two part three yeah yeah i think that would be the awesome by the way guy if you love whatever eugene been sharing the link is under the description below contact him like share and subscribe his channel follow for more tips and information because i think this will be very useful for a lot of young men outside there one last question for you sure. Yeah. what the advice and sharing you will give to a man mm. that go through retrench and this mm. in this pandemic right now this is a new pandemic yeah. i call ai yeah, pandemic. yeah true true and and a lot of people get retrained right now nothing wrong with ai i love yeah. AI. my company is I have like 80 percent using ai right now right that's how quick you have to adapt to get used yes. to it and i'm aware that a lot of people refuse to learn and change and lead them to the boss have to fire them because you cannot use the old system in the new way of doing work yeah. so i'm sure this will be helpful for them because you've been go through that experience emotionally mentally and physically yeah. Yeah. what you want to tell all the men who go through that cycle right now in their life yeah there, there are three main areas and, and actually that's exactly what i coach on so the first area is called mindset which is a mm. belief system i mentioned how i went through a belief system just now mm. and I, I realized without that right i mean i can coach them on anything like cv linkedin it, it's, it's mm. all useless <laughs> because the belief system is still the old system so how can any job be a new job? It's impossible. Every job you go to, every company will still be an old job because your belief is the same as last time. Yes. And so I realized that is number one need to change, which is why we go to things like MMI and many, many, many other programs. I think I've spent at least $45,000 in the past 10 years. And yeah, every I dollar... I spent even a million dollars for that. A million <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. But, so, but don't get me wrong. It's make me back multi-million yes. dollar back so yes. i don't yeah, ROI, I, will yes. I will never stop tell people to learn you know even yes. pay for private coach you know how much yes. coach i pay right now for voice <laughs> coaching for public yes. speaking coaching personal yes. training for keep yes. my shape and my look yes. and then yeah. pay for my mentor per hour for them to teach me about how to scale my business yes. teach me about finance teach me about ai all this i pay and people oh, think oh. me and my today is be my i oh. say no because i'm yes. i've figured out the key to success it pay yes. for people already super success in that area yes. that's it yes. if you want to save money and, and 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 again i think success is not for everybody i hate yes. when some people coach come and bullshit success is for everybody you can learn i i don't agree if you don't have a bowl to go for it <laughs> don't go and find yeah. a job yeah. learn to be good employee but don't go to bring your yourself to a, and and i when i share before i invest million dollar inside me people are like are yeah. you serious i say yeah but at least i have a brain you know i don't invest million yeah. dollar in handbag and dresses i invest million dollar in my brain so i well, i'm proudly well, to well, say that i proudly yeah. to say that i like i don't buy dumb shit, you know i yeah. don't right. and i don't say in the way that all oh, that is dumb shit for women i'm just saying for me it's yeah. dumb shit. Yes. for yeah, you yeah. it's valuable for yeah, me it's priority valuable. La. Priorities. Yeah. it is it is so yeah. so yeah you you like you say encourage yeah. people learn more you know and learn please more, do that. Ch change the belief yeah. system actually the the word learning i have to be careful so because in singapore they have this called life lifelong learning institute Right, L -L -I. Yeah. so the government pays singaporeans i mean you have been saying singaporeans are very privileged which is true right because instead of us paying the government pay us to go and learn yeah and because of this uh this to me is a bad habit because if people pay me to learn 
I'm not really learning already. I, I'm just going because I want to be paid. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I, I feel like if anyone listening to it right now, you know what I'm talking about. You know, don't yeah. go and just spend government money. Spend your own money <laughs> to be coached, to be mentored. Yeah. So that's the first uh, M, which is the mindset. The second mm. M is exactly what you said about buying dumb shit. Lah. Yeah. So <laughs> when when I lost my job, right, I, I bought a very, very big dumb shit. Okay? Oh, wow. It is, yeah. It is called a, a car. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I love people admit that dumb shit. <laughs> Especially Singapore, because you pay about hundred thousand dollars just for a piece of paper. Yeah. Then after that, you pay another hundred thousand dollars to buy the car, right? Yeah. So I, I I don't know what happened to me because I was retrenched. I was jobless. So why did I buy a car? Like till today, I look back. I'm thinking like there's something seriously wrong with me mentally. Right? It's completely illogical. It was just an emotional reaction, right? To feel proud of myself that even though I lost my job, I still have a car. Yeah, but anyway, after five months, I sold my car. And in the process, mm. I lost a lot of money, obviously, mm. right? Depreciation and all that. So number yeah. two M is money. You know, I, I've been coaching a lot of people, men and women who lost their job. It is time to be serious about money, right? Last time you had a job, you were not serious about money. Now you lost your job. You know, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you better be serious about money. Yeah, so I actually went to take investment exams, legal exams to be very serious about money. So that's number two. You know, we need to know what are the options out there. You know, what is dumb shit? What is liability? What is leveraged loan? What is a good loan, bad loan? You know, what is investment, high risk, mid risk, low risk? You know, everything. We cannot say, uh, leave it to my financial advisor. Uh, leave it to my parents. Leave it to my spouse. Take some personal responsibility for your own money. So that's number two. And the third and final M is mastery. I mean, we mentioned this earlier. You know, yeah. be very, very, very good. Like, what, what you say? Wow, you got mentor for public speaking. You got mentor for fitness. That is exactly what we all need to do. Don't be yeah. a mediocre person. Don't just cruise yeah. through life. Like, oh, yeah. I'm roughly good in speaking. I'm roughly good in finance. I'm roughly good in coding. No. I don't believe that. Yeah. Don't be roughly good. Be very extremely good until you reach mastery in your field. Yeah, so yeah. these are the three areas I advise all people who are retrenched. Yeah, thank you. Uh, because you you just speak up what I, I mean, this is what I've been doing, right? I'm sure yes. you are as well. And yes. yeah. I want to remind people in that, like, yeah, like what Eugene says is what I'm doing. And I mm. want to repeat again, yes, I pay <laughs> a lot for all this. Yes. And I've been saying it and people don't believe. I say up to you if you don't believe, you know. Yeah. I pay people a thousand dollar per hour for sit with them to yes. learn inside information to direct go to deep with them because self-learning how much you can learn from chat gbt how much you can yeah. learn from google you can learn theory yeah. but if you go down to wisdom experience and go straight to the core you have to reach out to professor the people yes. that be done that do that for the last 20 years of their life they will give you a wisdom that no chat GPT can give. I'm sorry, that's a fact. Certain true, things true. That about human yeah. touch, you no have wisdom. to pay for people to do, right? And I will never stop investing myself, right? People ask yes. me, how do you learn in the short period of time to scale your business? I have 800 people under me right now. Wow. I cannot do that without <laughs> coaches. I cannot do that without people that I admire a lot and learning. Yeah. Me. And I cannot do that with like, proudly say that oh i have it by myself it's bullshit okay and yeah. and i will highlight the next thing that thank you for the the sharing mm. that i want mm. to let people know if you say right now you don't have money and you wait to have money to learn the answer is you will never have enough money to learn yeah. and you will never be ready to learn and yeah. all people who are success will never want to teach you i'm sorry it's so true because they're yeah, so yeah. busy with their life I know when you bother one, you know, like per day, I have a thousand email people sending. Can I be your mentee? Why do I have to say yes? I need to see your commitment. Why do I'm going to sacrifice my five mm. hours with my daughter for someone that I don't know if you're willing to change your life? Mm. Show mm. something that negotiation. And I want to change this mindset in people as well, especially yeah. young people about. So I pay money. You have to do what I want. I want to yeah. change my life, but because I got money, you need to do. I'm sorry, most people successful that I coach, like they they teach me as well. 
even I have money, they don't, they can don't see me. Some appointment yeah. I book, I only can see them in six months from now. Do you know how tough was that to meet certain successful people? It mean even you have money, even you send them like few hundred thousand, they're not going to see you. They yeah. make you yeah. wait. Why they make you wait? Because they have all the priority because yes. a mastery of learn how to say no. So people who want to learn right now, I will highly recommend you to start humbly learn about the fact that if you want to change your life, you have first mm. come from yourself that you have to yep. willing to invest in yourself and you have to be willing to invest and be humble. If not, yes. nobody want to, to guide you either. That That's my, my personal experience, right? I, like, yeah. I go through that. Fully agree, fully agree. Yeah, so thank you so much for today, your time, uh, Eugene. It was a pleasure. It was amazing conversation. I, I'm sure you love this conversation as well. I, I love it. I love your energy. Yeah, yeah you're very authentic, yeah. very cheerful. Thank you. Yeah, and I would, and you guys, if you love whatever Eugene's sharing, again, for the third time of this show, <laughs> follow him under the yeah, description yeah. below. And we will come back with you at other guests and then all the episodes. Mm. Thank you, Eugene. And don't forget to like, yeah, I would love share, to subscribe to give channel. something to your audience. Yeah, I yes. run three masterclasses uh, of about 90 minutes each. Yeah, totally free. And yep. they can just click and join whenever they want. Yeah. Lovely. The link is mm. under the description, guys. Yes. Join mm. it and follow him. And then you will get free class, especially for yeah. all my young boy and young men who are watching my channel. <laughs> and right, I right. see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will come back with you with another episode and another amazing guest. Bye!